Hello and welcome to the 10th anniversary edition of Ask GC Anything, the show where we quite literally take your questions and turn them into answers. What a format. I know, I can't believe so. We're already 10 editions in. I mean, it's, it seems like yesterday. I know, it is hard to believe, isn't it? So we better make sure that this show is worthy of a 10th anniversary show. We're going to certainly give it a good try. Let's start off with this from Morning Bathroom Inspiration. If it's okay, Morning bath Bathroom Inspiration, we're just going to call you MBI to save time. Basically, you've been talking, you're a little bit concerned about your ability to produce power. You've got, uh, you're 68 kilograms, a power to weight ratio of 3.5 kilograms, which is quite respectable, Absolutely. but you're struggling to stay with the group on the flat and undulating roads, although you're riding pretty well on the climbs. Now, first off, your power to weight, seems pretty good to me. Oh, it does. You're clearly Absolutely. riding well on the climbs. There's a couple of things you can do here. And the first one, which Tom's going to talk about, isn't just about improving your power, is it? No. As we said, we think you've probably got enough power to be really competitive on all parts of your ride. So maybe it's about using that power wisely. So it's not necessarily about maximum power, it's about being fresh. So let me demonstrate, if I can, using mini GCN. You, MBI, can be Matt. Yep. This is a flat road and you're coming into a punchy section and there you are moshing it on the front. You get to the, you get to the ramp. You've already used up all your gas. So instead, maybe think about coming into that punchy section in second wheel. There you are, look. Sheltering, using 30% less energy. Yep. Fresh as a daisy. Fresh as a daisy. Get to the ramp, you've got all the gas in the world. So, have, sorry, Matt. He crashed. That wasn't, it's, advise you don't do that bit, but uh, apart from the crashing bit, probably some very, very good tips there. But the other obvious one, which we've got a video about, is working on increasing your power. So if you combine all those little tactical tips and bits of advice with even a moderate increase in power, you'll be far better off. And we've got a video on that called How to Increase Your Power, just up here. Put it into that big gear and then let yourself come almost down to a stop. Now once you're there, grip hold of the bars tightly here and when you're ready, fully concentrated, make a 10 second effort at your maximum power. Well, I must admit, so we were, if you don't mind me saying, looking pretty powerful in that video. Great camera trickery. Some of our best ever work. But anyway, next up, this is from James Marsh, who's been experiencing, over various periods of time, just come back to cycling, lower back pain. Now this, without a shadow of a doubt, is a really, really common problem that I think we've all experienced from time to time. We have the, even the most experienced cyclists with the best core regime, the best bike fits, still get lower back problems. Because, let's face it, we do a tough sport. But you shouldn't accept any kind of pain on the bike for what it is. There are always things you can look at and try and help alleviate the issue. So it could be bike fit, it could be the aforementioned core workouts. But we do have a video touching on all those subjects called How to Prevent Lower Back Pain. And it's playing behind us right now, so I suggest you take a quick squeeze. But best of luck, I'm sure you'll get it sorted, no problem. Another cause of lower back pain can be the use of big gears. Even at exactly the same power output as a high cadence, the extra stress in your muscles at a lower cadence can therefore put more stress on the lower back. So try in training to keep high cadence, preferably over 90 revs per minute. Now this can feel quite unnatural if you're not used to doing it, but emphasize it in training for a few weeks and you'll be surprised at just how quickly it will feel natural. Time now for the rapid fire round. So first up, we've got this from Jeff Sewell. How do you get bars aligned perfectly with forks? Eyeballing is not working for me. I only eyeball, so what's the solution? Well, it is a very good question, actually. We have made a video on the subject, but in a nutshell, what you can do, which I learned because I didn't know, is you can tape like a spirit level to your forks so they're aligned horizontally in the same direction as your handlebars, mm -hmm. which means you then got a nice straight edge that you can look down and align your uh, handlebars with. And it, does, it doesn't sound like much, but it really does help. It's incredibly uh, powerful. So that was simple and succinct. Well Thank done. Very much. Next up, fire, it is rapid fire, we're going to try and rapid fire it as best we can. Nigel Hall, hi, after a fairly fast descent over the weekend, I realised that I wouldn't know what to do if my brakes failed. Any advice other than just getting ready to crash? We've certainly got other advice than just getting ready to crash, and it's make sure that your brakes are well maintained. So your outer cables, your inner cables, and the adjustment, and also the brake pads as well. So, 
it's touch wood, crashing, it's a you shouldn't one, ever it? really have brakes fail. But yeah, if you are going to crash, I suppose if you had incredible peace of mind and cold bloodedness, you mm. might just pop your your foot on your back tyre. That takes slow skill, down. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Foot down, or just try and maybe just fall onto grass or something, but it, or just lay the bike down. But it's a difficult. Or a handily one. placed body of water, like a canal. Yeah, definitely. That would help. Anyway, just basically make sure your brakes are good and your tyres as Do well. That. Okay, next up, Luke Higgins. Ooh, leg embrocation. Is it worth using? Does it have much benefit for your local race? Well, I think we've both actually come to a conclusion about leg embrocation separately, and neither of us used it, but for different reasons. Uh, I think there isn't actually any evidence to say that it does work, because what essentially the way it makes you feel warm is by irritating your skin, doesn't it? And so your skin feels hot, but actually it doesn't do anything to your muscles below it. So it doesn't really work. Some people find that it helps. It makes your legs shiny. That's quite a powerful uh, thing for the start of the race. And there's a lovely smell of the changing rooms, which I've sort, I'm quite fond of. I'm glad other people use embrocation for mm. that reason. Uh, but I actually had a very bad experience once uh, where essentially I couldn't sleep for two days afterwards because my legs were on fire. Uh, let's leave that there, shall we? Yeah, so if you do use embrocation, uh, make sure you haven't shaved, don't do it immediately after shaving your legs. And make sure you wash your hands after using embrocation before popping to the loo. No more on that, but I think you know what we mean. Next up, we have this question from Doug Hungerford. Thank you, Doug. How the heck does a nail find its way into my tire? Good point. Don't these things lay flat on the ground? I've never dropped a nail and had it land, well, pointy bit up, nor have I, to be perfectly honest with you. I would think that it would be impossible. Yeah, in any case, last week I pulled a nearly two centimetre nail out of my tire. Well, because it's the 10th anniversary edition of this particular program, we've upped the budget, and we've got some more science involved. Science class is on. The table is going to be turned into a laboratory to try and look at why a nail may or may not stick into your tyre. Simon, take it away. We have our demonstration wheel. We have our nail. You ready for this? I am. You ready for this? No. No. Essentially, I think it's fair to say that the results are inconclusive. What if it's just bad luck? What if it's that way, Ooh. and then it flicks? Oh, no. or it flicks up a little bit there. No. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it might be that our nail, our stunt too nail, long. is just too long. Uh, which I suppose, if you're going to leave nails on the road, for safety reasons, make sure they're really big. Definitely. Yeah. If you're doing any DIY near a, near a main road, make sure you use long nails. Think about cyclists. Science. Done. So basically, we haven't got the answer to that one, have we? No, sorry. Sorry, Doug. Whoa, how young does Lloydie look? God, he looks so young. Look at his look hair. At him, fresh he's not, face. He's not using any product on his hair, no. is he? There's that no, is nuts. There's no product, there's no hair dryer. Has he plucked his eyebrows? Wow, that's amazing. Anyway, no, this I'm, is a seriously, has he plucked his eyebrows? I'm not too then? sure. We'll have to rewind that in a minute. Look, look at him. Whoa. Oh my God, how close is he to the camera? Anyway. Let's talk about the question that was posed by Hoyin Doan. It's a very good question indeed, because most of us have been... Uh, Sorry. <laughs> most of us have been riding for a long time. Uh, riding out of the saddle becomes com completely innate, and it's something we don't even think about. But when you really think about it and deconstruct it, it's actually quite a skill that you acquire mm. over time. Um, it sounds as if you're probably using too uh, low lower gear, so gear up, so change to a, you know, a sprocket that means you can lean on the bike a little bit more, or lean on the, the, the cranks, and relax, and just pedal a little bit slower rather than being caught up in it all. Uh, and, and you'll be absolutely fine, but we do have a video on how to ride out of the saddle, where this man, Dan Lloyd, with fluffy hair, shows you exactly what to do. Rock your bike gently from side to side, pushing it to the left when your right leg is pushing down, and over to the right when your left leg is leading. This will basically put your weight over the top of the pedal which is pushing down, using gravity to your advantage. Well that's it for another edition of Ask GC Anything. Please keep those comments, queries and questions coming and you can post those in the comment section below this video or post your questions on Facebook using the hashtag TalkBack. Yeah, Ask GC Anything isn't really anything without your questions. It certainly isn't. Keep them coming. Absolutely. Now for something a little bit different, we went behind the scenes at Team Sky to find out their nutritional strategies for training and racing. It's a fascinating video mm. and you can click through to it just up there. And to find out how cycling can change your life for the better, click just down here. Before you leave us though, do make sure you subscribe to GCM. To do that you can just click on the globe, which is probably somewhere near the end of this nail. Just be careful. Yeah, sorry mate. We need help from safety to come yeah. dispose of that now. It's around here somewhere. We're finished with it. Can you? Yeah, thanks. 10th anniversary. Boom.